ยสุนิดก็ขอแจ้งเพิ่มเติมนะคะในในใน,ในส่วนของคําถามนะคะว่าถ้าเกิดว่าใครมีคําถามเนี่ยก็ให้ยกมือนะคะบางครั้งเนี่ยคือคลาสของเราคือเริ่มหนึ่งทุ่มถึงสองทุ่มแต่เวลามีคําถามเราก็จะยาวไปถึงสองทุ่มครึ่งอะไรก็จะไม่อยากให้เลยมากนะคะแล้วถ้าเกิดใครคําถามอะไรไม่พอเนี่ยก็สามารถแชทมาบอกส่วนตัวได้หรือว่าเราจะถามในวันถัดไปได้นะคะก็ขอให้ยกมือยกมือไว้นะคะแล้วเดี๋ยวเราจะเรียก And if it is little later, probably some of us might not have been looking into the chat box, and also uh, we'd like to apologize from the deepest core from our heart. ถ้าเกิดว่าคำถามไหนเราแบบไม่ได้ถามให้อะไรอย่างเงี้ยค่ะคือตกลงไปก็ขอขอโทษด้วย So anybody who had any questions regarding previous chapters, you can please raise your hands from before, so that will be addressed today um, at, at the beginning of the question and answer session. อาจารย์ใครมีคำถามก็ให้ยกมือเลยนะคะเวลามาถึงในส่วนของคำถามกลุ่มเนี่ยก็ให้ยกมือบอกไว้ Thank you very much Hare Krishna Om Magyana Tamarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Nama Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swamaniti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Paschachya Deshatarine Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasari Gaur Bhaktavinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare Jai Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai So today we're going on to Chapter 15, Yoga of the Supreme Person which is more commonly known as Purushottam Yoga. So we'll begin text number one. The Supreme Personality of God had said, It is said that there is an imperishable banyan tree that has its roots upwards <coughs> excuse me and its branches down and whose leaves are the Vedic hymns one who knows this tree is the knower of the Vedas <coughs> So, mentioned in, in the Sanskrit, the first line says, Urva Mulam. Urva Mulam means the roots are up and Adasa come, the branches are down. So, this is the opposite of what we would usually expect from a tree. So Lord Krishna is beginning this 15th chapter by giving this analogy of the banyan tree. Archana? I didn't hear you. Oh, oh, my internet is unstable. We just had a heavy rainstorm here, so the internet is unstable a bit. I said, Lord Krishna is beginning this 15th chapter by giving an example of a banyan tree. In the 14th chapter, yesterday, we heard about the three modes of material nature. 
แล้วเมื่อวานเนี่ยเราก็ได้ฟังเรื่องตามระดับแห่งธรรมชาติวัตถุ So now in this chapter, Lord Krishna is describing how we are all entangled in these three modes of nature. It's like being in the middle. It's like being somewhere within this banyan tree. The banyan tree grows very, very big, and nobody knows where where it begins or where it ends. So it's mentioned here. The the leaves of the tree are like the Vedic hymns. And one who knows this tree, he's the knower of the Vedas. So, the the position of the living entity is that we're somewhere in this tree, and it's difficult to get free. Where do we find a tree with the root up and the branches down? It's just like if we take somebody by the feet and we hold them up, we hold up, the, we hold up their feet, so their feet are up and their head and leg, head, head and arms are down. So we don't feel very comfortable like that. So this is our position in the material world. We are just like this. This tree. The the root is up. It means the higher planets, Brahma, Lord Brahma, they're up on the top of the tree. And the, the, this reflection of the tree, the, this tree, if you see a reflection of a real tree, you can see the same way. You can see the root up and the branches down when you see a reflection of a tree. The reflection of the tree is on the water. In the same way, our we are in this tree of material existence based on our desire. According to our desire and our qualification, we get a particular body somewhere in the tree. The higher living entities, like the demigods, they're in the top of the tree. เหมือนกับอย่าง
เช่นพวกเหล่าเทวดาเนี่ยพวกท่านเนี่ยจะอยู่ข้างบนของต้นไม้ and the human beings are in the middle of the tree แต่ว่าสิ่งมีชีวิตเนี่ยจะอยู่ตรงกลางของต้นไม้ and the lower living entities like the animals and the trees they're in the bottom of the tree แล้วชีวิตที่ต่ำกว่าอย่างเช่นร่างสัตว์หรือว่าพวกต้นไม้อะไรอย่างเงี้ยเขาจะเป็นในส่วนล่างของต้นไม้ So to get free of the tree, we have to cut our way out. And we have to use the axe to cut the way out. The axe is knowledge. And we have to have a no. The, actually, the axe is 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 more detachment, and it's sharpened with knowledge. Yeah, the more we have knowledge, the sharper the axe will be, and the better, easier it is to cut our way out from that tree. เพราะฉะนั้นเราก็ความไม่ยึดติดของเราก็จะเหมือนกับมีดใช่ไหมคะที่เราจะตัดต้นไม้เพื่อหานําทางออกได้แต่มีดของเราจะคมขนาดไหนเนี่ยมันก็ขึ้นอยู่กับความรู้ที่เรามี So we're going to tell you a story now about about uh, how people get attracted by the reflection ตอนนี้จะเล่าเรื่องให้ฟังว่าผู้คนเนี่ยจะได้จะมีการจะแสดงยังไงบ้างเวลาได้รับผลกระทบ Right, we're saying the tree is like a reflection on the water. เหมือนกับที่เราให้ตัวอย่างก็คือต้นไม้ที่เห็นแสงสะท้อนอาจจะเห็นความสะท้อนของเขาในแม่น้ำได้ So the the material world is like the reflection, and the spiritual world is the real tree. So there's a story about the one queen who had a beautiful necklace, very valuable with many diamonds. So one day, when she took the necklace off, somehow a monkey got in to the palace, and the monkey stole the necklace. The monkey took the necklace away and put, went up in the tree with the necklace. So the queen was very upset, and she very, she was very anxious to get the necklace back. And she asked everyone, all the citizens in the kingdom, please help me to get back this necklace. So all the people in the kingdom, they all went looking for the necklace because she promised a, a good reward if somebody could find the necklace. So what happened was the people. You can see the bottom picture on the left. All the people are standing on the bridge. They're looking into the water. They could see the necklace in the water. But when they went to try to get the necklace in the water, 
They couldn't get it. So there was a wise man, he told them, he said, that's only the reflection you're seeing in the water. The necklace is up in the tree and you're just seeing the reflection in the water. So this is what happens. We are attracted by the reflection. We don't see the real world. We only see the reflection of the real world. The real world is the spiritual world. This material world is just the reflection. So Lord Krishna gives us this example in the beginning of the 15th chapter to help us to get detached from the material world. Okay, going ahead now, text number 8 and 9. Lord Krishna is giving knowledge. The living entity in the material world carries his different conceptions of life from one body to another and as the air carries aroma. Thus he takes one kind of body and again and again quits it to take another. Yeah? So if you look in the illustration, the picture there, you can see a caterpillar. And the, and the, the caterpillar gradually changes and becomes a butterfly. In the same way, people, we carry a conception, we think about something, we think, we have some idea in our mind, and it arranges for our next life. The example was given, just like the air carries the aroma. When the air when the air passes over the garbage, then it carries the smell of all the garbage. And when the air passes over the rose garden, then it carries the aroma of all the flowers and the roses in the garden. In the same way, our mind carries different ideas and thoughts about who we are. And 
And in this way we get another body. Text number 9 says, the living entity, thus taking another gross body, obtains a certain type of ear, eye, tongue, nose and sense of touch, which are grouped about the mind. He thus enjoys a particular set of sense objects. Yeah. Each and every living entity we enjoy, we have different kinds of senses. The, 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 some birds have very powerful eyes, they can see from very far away. We see the cat. Cat can see in the dark. And some animals have very powerful sense of hearing. They can hear even the sm smallest sound. So according to our qualification, according to our activities in this life, we get particular kinds of senses in our next life. Just like some people like the very nice smell of perfume, then they will put perfume on their body to have the very nice smell. So there's a deer in the Himalayas and that deer has the, the, a, a smell within its body. It can smell the perfume coming from inside its body. So people who like that nice perfume smell, they may get the body like a deer, so that they can smell the perfume all the time. Here you can see, in the center is the soul, and then the subtle body, the mind and the intelligence and the ego. And outside you have the gross body. The physical elements of the gross body made up of earth, water, fire, uh, air, ether. So the subtle body carries the soul to the next life and you get another gross body. So we have three bodies. We have the physical body or the gross body. And we have the subtle body. And we have the subtle body. 
And we have the spiritual body, the soul. So the soul is eternal, it's spiritual. It doesn't take birth and it doesn't die. And the gross body, we give up one gross body and then the subtle body goes with the soul to make the next body. Just, okay, we'll go ahead, text number 12 to 13. The splendor of the sun which dissipates the darkness of this whole world comes from me and the splendor of the moon and the splendor of fire are also from me. So Krishna is describing how he maintains this whole material world. The light of the sun and the light of the moon, this is Krishna's energy. So this is Brahman. Brahman is the energy of Krishna. And we see the sun giving light every day, so much heat, so much light every day. And for many, many th millions of years it's been giving light. The sun never goes out. It never, it never has a power problem. It's always there and it's always giving heat and light. So this, con this heat of the sun, light of the sun comes from Krishna. If we didn't have the sun and the moon, this whole planet would just be dark, a darkness place that would be terrible. And fire is also so important because from fire we get heat and warmth. We use fire for cooking our food. When we want to eat, we have to cook and we use the fire to cook. And fire is used to, to create energy like electricity. So it all, these things all come from Krishna. The text number 13, Krishna says, I enter into each planet and by my energy they stay in orbit. I become the moon and thereby supply the juice of life to all vegetables. So we see in the, in the, in the universe there are so many planets they're all floating in space. 
เราก็เห็นได้ว่าในจักรวาลก็มีโลกเนี่ยที่มีแต่ละโลกเนี่ยที่จะหมุนหมุน If we pick up some sand in our hand and hold some sand in our hand and then open our hand and then the sand will all fall to the ground. สมมุติเราเนี่ยถือยกแบบว่าจับทรายขึ้นมาพอเราจับทรายขึ้นมาแล้วเราก็ปล่อยมันไปมันก็จะหล่นลงไปกับพื้น We cannot keep even some grains of sand. To float in the in in space. But Lord Krishna can keep all the planets floating in space. There's there's a famous person in the history in the Greek history, and his name was Atlas. So he 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 was very powerful, very strong. He had a big, huge, strong body. So he was picking up the Earth planet. But you could see it was very heavy for him. It was very difficult to pick up even one planet. But Lord Krishna keeps all the planets floating in space just by His own inconceivable power. And then Krishna also provides the juice, which goes in a special taste. Of the juice, which is there in all vegetables. Yeah, we grow the vegetables in, in the garden, and the moonlight gives off special rays, and these rays go in. They make the juice in vegetables, make vegetables so tasty, because they get the light from the moon. <laughs> So, of course, we're vegetarian. We vegetables are so important for us. So, Krishna maintains us by giving us so many varieties of vegetables with nice tastes. Okay, we'll go ahead. Text number fourteen. Krishna says, "I am the fire of digestion in the bodies of all living entities, and I join with the air of life, outgoing and incoming, to digest the four kinds of food stuff." So, when we eat food, we have to have a, the power to digest the food. That's the fire of digestion, and that comes from Krishna. If we don't have good digestion, we won't be able to eat, or we won't be able to digest the food properly. So Krishna provides that fire of digestion. So that we can have a good appetite. 
พระชนาทรงเป็นผู้ให้ทรงเป็นไฟในการย่อยอาหารเพื่อให้ระบบย่อยอาหารดำเนินไปได้ด้วยดีอัน Krishna also says there's a special air of life which helps us to digest four kinds of food stuff. Right, there are four kinds of food stuff, food which is late, chewed, swallowed and sucked. So Lord Krishna arranges the air in our bodies just so that we can digest these different kinds of food. We see how Krishna is taking so much care of us. He's maintaining us, just like a father. He's providing everything for us. So we are hearing how Krishna is acting through the Brahman potency. Now we're going to hear about how Krishna as Paramatma acts. This is text number 15. A famous, a famous verse. Sarvasya jaham bridisani visto matasmitir gyanam apohanam cha vidaischa sarve raham eva vidyo vedanta krit veda vid eva chaham. Lord Krishna says, I am seated in everyone's heart, and from me comes remembrance, knowledge, and forgetfulness. By all the Vedas I am to be known. Indeed, I am the compiler of Vedanta and I am the knower of the Vedas. So Lord Krishna describes he's the Paramatma, he's in everyone's heart. <laughs> and as the super soul, Krishna provides. Uh, he acts in different ways. For some people, he will give knowledge. Can you hear me okay? Yes, good. For some people, he will give knowledge. He will help them to remember about their past life or who they are and why they're here. He will help them to understand the nature of the material world, their duty here. He tells us from the heart, do this, don't do that. And for some people, he lets them forget. That he lets them forget about everything, about what happened in the past and the suffering they had and the problems they had. He will let them forget 
so that they can enjoy more. Lord Krishna also says, by all the Vedas I am to be known. So the purpose of, act, of studying the Vedas is to come to know Krishna. And Krishna said, I am the compiler of the Vedas, I am compiler of Vedanta. Actually, the Vedanta was written by Vyasadeva, but Vyasadeva is incarnation, he's ex incarnation of Krishna, he's Krishna's incarnation. So Krishna empowered Vyasadeva to write the Vedas, to write the Vedanta rather, Vedanta. Vedanta is the summary of the Vedas. Veda means knowledge and Vedanta means the end of knowledge. So the end of knowledge is to know Krishna. So in this way Lord Krishna describes how as a Paramatma he is helping is arranging to maintain everything in the material world. We'll go on to text 19. Whoever knows me as the Supreme Personality of Godhead, without doubting, is the knower of everything. He therefore engages himself in full devotional service to me, O son of Bharat. Ba Bharat. Son of Bharat. So, you can see in the picture here, there's a crow and the, it's eating the palm fruit. So, people often ask the question, how did we get here in this material world? Why, how did we come here? They want to know where did we fall from? Did we come from the spiritual world? So Prabhupada would give the example about the crow and the palm fruit. And he tells about how that bird, the crow, lands on the palm fruit. And when he lands on the tree, palm fruit, the fruit falls on the ground. So, 
So some people argue, oh, the fruit fell because the bird landed on the tree, so it caused the fruit to fall. And someone else said, no, the fruit was ripe. So the fruit, ripe fruit, it, fall, it fell on the ground because it was ripe. Archana, you can't hear me? Archana? Archana, can you hear me? Archana, Hare Krishna. She has an internet problem. Oh, she has an internet problem. I thought it was me. Okay. <laughs> Kanupriya Mataji, are you there? Translate to Thai. Anyone else can translate? Sumadhuri Mataji, are you free? Should we do Mara? Should we continue? Uh, yeah, maybe you do Nepali translation. Yeah, I'm doing it, Mara. Oh, that's going on, eh? Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll. So I'm telling the story about the fruit, the tau fruit. People are arguing, why did the fruit fall? Somebody said it fell because the crow landed on the tree, and another person said the fruit fell because it was ripe. But the intelligent person will just come and eat the fruit. Why worry about why the fruit fell? In the same way, people ask... Uh, Okay, go ahead. เออเดี๋ยวนี้นะก็มีคนเนี่ยก็มาคิดกันว่าเออทําไมทําไมผลไม้ถึงตกลงมาจากจากต้นไม้ที่ได้บางคนก็บอกว่าอ๋อไอ
picks up on the point that Krishna describes Arjuna as being sinless. And he said this is an important qualification for devotional service. Right. If we want to engage in Krishna's service, we have to be free from all sinful reactions. So we want to be very careful to strictly follow Krishna conscious principles, to stay in, in, in the, to do good sadhana and avoid any activities which are not connected with Krishna. So Krishna said, if we do this, then we are wise and everything we do, all of our endeavors will be perfect. So this is the final verse of chapter 20, of chapter 15, Yoga Purushottam. The first part, the first five verses of the chapter were about the weakness of heart, meaning the attachment to sense gratification and to material pleasures. That's the first five verses and then from verse number six to the end, text number 20, Lord Krishna is describing the yoga of the Supreme Person, Yoga Purushottam. So here's a nice verse from Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Smartavyam satatam vishnur vishmatavya najatuchit Sarve vidini shedashur etayore vakinkaraha. One should always remember Vishnu and never forget him. All injunctions and prohibitions are based upon these two principles. <laughs> So we have to remember, we have to train ourselves to remember Vishnu. We have to we have to train the mind to remember Krishna. We should remember Krishna. So how to do that? Simply by chanting the holy name, by chanting Hare Krishna. You can always remember Krishna. So 
Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Okay, we'll go ahead. Questions? Any questions today? ครูมหาราชดานวัตนามพิเศษเซตมาฮัมโบออฟฟิเซสอ่าอาจารย์ so this is a question from Shaya Madhavi. She said that uh, when Krishna explained that he gives the remembrance and also forgetfulness. So why why some people they can uh, still remember their past life activities and all? And why what is the reason that Krishna gives them the memory of their past life? What is the logic behind that? Well, we don't really have a clear answer to that question, why some people remember their past life. But we see in Srimad, ba in Srimad Bhagavatam, we see the pastime of Jad Bharat, that Bharat Maharaj, Bharat Maharaj was the king and then he left everything, gave up everything, went to the mountains. But while he was in the mountains, he got attached to a deer and he, and he forgot about his meditation and his renunciation and he got involved with taking care of the deer, little deer. And so somehow he had an accident and he fell off the cliff and he became a deer in his next life. And he could remember his past life. He could remember that he'd been the, he'd been king and he'd retired to Himalayas, and now he'd got the body of a deer. He was given the remembrance. <laughs> So he got the remembrance because it was to help him to be more careful, not to deviate from his spiritual practice. We see, in general, most people don't remember their past life because it would affect their enjoy. They wouldn't be able to enjoy this life if they remembered the last life. We see some young children, they can remember their previous life, but once they grow up a little bit, they forget everything. But Bharat Maharaj, 
he became the deer and then next life he took birth in a Brahmana family and he remembered what happened to him. So it's by special mercy of Krishna that one is given memory of the past life and then we're more careful what we do in this life. When we remember about the past lives, then we'll be much more careful to do good in this life and to prepare for a better next life. So the fact that some people remember their past life, that's to help us to understand that there is a past life, that we did have a past life. Although we don't remember, some people do remember. Not everybody, some people do remember and that's to teach us that there is a past life, that there is, that there is the eternal soul and we're all spiritual beings and we've taken birth many times. It is said reincarnation used to be in the Bible, in the Christian Bible, but they took it out because they thought if people know that there's many births, then they won't be very serious about going back to Godhead. So they made it that there's only one life and you either go to hell or to heaven, eternally. So this is not a very good philosophy. If you have to go to hell eternally and there's no hope of ever getting out, then God is not very merciful. You get only one chance and either you go to hell or you go to heaven. So that's the Christian idea. We don't support that. God is merciful. He gives everybody a chance. But we should be careful not to waste the opportunity of the human life. Okay, any other question? Yes, we did. Uh, host will unmute. Uh, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Guru Mahaparaj, and devotees, physics at Mahambala businesses. 
uh, is the disgust to the material world a symptom of the disappearance of material desires? Is distress the symptom of the end of material design? No. No, it's a disgust. Disgust? Oh. It's, yes. Uh -huh. To material world, a symptom of the disappearance of material desires. Archana? Mm. I don't really know. Is, she, she said, is, is this disgust? You know, you're disgusted by something. You're really tired of it, fed up with it. You don't... No. Is it a, um, is it a symptom of the end of material desires? So one may, one may be disgusted with material life, but his, they may not be disgusted for very long. That for some time you're disgusted, but again the desire can come to want to enjoy material life. So it's not just disgust because you're disgusted with the material life, it doesn't mean there will be no more material desires. The material desires will come, but if you have proper knowledge, if you have good knowledge, then you can conquer over these material desires. And if we have, we have, we understand that we don't, we cannot stop desire because desire is the nature of the mind. So we have to develop the higher taste, the, the pure desire, purified desires. <laughs> So we have the desire in relation to Krishna. That is proper use of desire. But, but you can you cannot put out desire forever. You cannot extinguish desire forever. It will come back again. You have to pure you have to purify your desires. Yes. Next question. yes, I got one question from Punamati Madhadi. Uh, so she asked, like now her her neighbors, they are they are having uh, the car business. Uh, her neighbors, and then uh, what happened is like now after the rain rain come right, then many uh, mosquito uh, happen from from there, and then it's disturbing her a lot. So. He is uh, now like killing them. So will there be a sin by killing that? 
ถามว่าถ้าเกิดว่าค่าอยู่เนี่ยจะบาปไหมนะคะมันจิงก็เล่าให้ฟังว่ามีข้างบ้านเนี่ยมีเยอะลางยางรถยนต์อยู่แล้วหลังจากนั้นยุบตกไอ้ยุบมาวางไข่แล้วก็มีไข่ยุบเต็มเลยก็มียุบไหลเลยจะเด็กคุณมาแล้วบอกการค่าอยู่ก็บาปนะคะมันจะเป็นบาป You have to put some mosquito net. Get yourself some mosquito net to protect you from the mosquitoes. Or get some. You get some frankincense and you burn the frankincense, and that will make the smoke. And the mosquitoes they don't like it. They go away. หรือว่าให้เอ่อเหมือนกับเอ่อใช้จุดกลิ่นเอานะกลิ่นที่แบบว่าเอ่อยุงไม่ชอบเวลาจุดกลิ่นเหล่านั้นแล้วเนี่ยก็ทําให้เอ่อที่เอ่อยุงหายไปที่ไอทุกเชนเน็ตพิเศษอะไรเงี้ย Just like here in India in Mayapur we have many mosquitoes in Mayapur also many mosquitoes ที่มาปูเนี่ยก็มียุงเยอะด้วย And they don't, they're not very merciful เขาเนี่ยยุงเนี่ยไม่ค่อยมีเมตตามากนะ They want to take our blood พอเขาเนี่ยอยากจะเอาเลือดของเรา So we have to keep you have to put some screen on the door To keep out, to keep out the mosquitoes. And you have to also burn, burn this, uh, burn this frankincense to keep the, make the smoke, so that they don't yeah. come. Usually, mosquito in Thailand they always come in the night, just at night, just at six o'clock time. Yeah. So from about four thirty until about seven thirty, you have to be very careful. But we don't want to just kill. You can't just go killing everything. That's not good. You never kill them all. There's so many of them. You just have have to get some. Put put this uh, smoke, this frank frankincense. When you burn the frankincense. We'll keep them away. Okay. Yes, good. We got three more questions. Yeah. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glory to Guru. Guru Maharaj, I have a uh, two questions. One question from previous chapter. Uh, you you have said that the people in mood of mood, uh, I mean, in the mood of goodness, when they left the body, these uh, people are reciting the mandar for them, reading the scriptures, and that kind of uh, living body is uh, living the body in. Mood of goodness. In that regard, uh, in that connection, I have a one experience. Like a few years ago, back, I had a disease called dengue. Mosquito bite me, and I was very sick, and I had to stay in the hospital for three nights, and I could not chant my round, even though I was very weak. I was trying to thinking for Krishna, but it's almost <laughs> impossible, and I hardly chant chant my round. So and the body around also there was no one there. So suppose in that situation, if I left body, what kind of living body?
sorry, that mean I mean is it more of goodness or passion or it's ignorance or what is what can we Archana? อาจารย์คําถามของโปรดีนะคะก็คําถามมาจากเมื่อวานนะคะที่ถามไม่ทันวันนี้ก็เลยถามบอกว่าบุรุษมาระอธิบายถึงคนที่จะตายในระดับความ
And sometimes people think Krishna is just an ordinary person in history. But he's just a, an ordinary, he's a great person in history, but he's not God. So Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that the foolish mock at me appearing amongst them like an ordinary person. They do not know my transcendental nature and supreme dominion over all that be. And the people you're speaking to, these pandits, they're karmakandi people. Their interests, their, their prayers, their rituals are all for material desires, fulfilling material desires. And Krishna responds very slowly to these things. He does not very quickly satisfy people's material desires, so they don't worship Krishna. Okay, any other questions? Yes, good. Uh, I think some of the Guru Mahatma's you see the post that... Okay. Um, post, uh, yeah. My question is, last paragraph of... Yeah. Uh, last mm -hmm. paragraph of last Toka of 15th chapter, 15.20. Srila Prabhupada writes, writes in the purport that the most important thing one has to surmount is weakness of the heart. And then, in this, in this chapter, the first verse describes the process of freeing oneself from these weakness of the heart. Is the weakness of the heart Krishna mentions here, mentioned in the fifth sloka as false prestige, illusion, and false association, material lust? Yes, Archana. Okay, okay. Uh, Mataji got harmed. I Yes, I I would agree that that slope number five describes the surrendering process, what we have to give up. So Srila Prabhupada was explaining the pro the, that the problem is the weakness of the heart. The weakness of the heart, this is the attachment to sense gratification, material pleasures. The desires to enjoy the material world and material facilities. So the same thing is described in text number five, that the surrendering process, we have to give up those things which are not favorable to devotional service. Okay, 
ต่อการต่อชีวิตคลิปของเราการพบหาสมาคมกับคนกับคลิปความหลงเนี่ย material pride and material uh, this false ego big strong ego we have a big image we're very proud of ourselves so these things are not in good for devotional service <laughs> Yeah, so I think Madhu, Sumaduri Lila is right. She's identified the weakness of the heart there in text number five being described. All right. Any other question? Yes, good. Got two more. Uh -huh. uh, are you there? If not, then Madhavi Pavani. Madhavi Madhavi Pavani, yes. Mostly Anmir Garam. They don't know how to unmute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, as devotees, certainly devotees who take birth will get a, a guaranteed to get a human form of life. And if, you know, it, Bhagavad Gita describes if we practice even for a short time, you go to the heavenly planets and enjoy sense gratification there and then come back and take birth in a rich or wealthy family. But if you are advanced in yoga, then you will take birth in a family of devotees. Yes, 
To commit suicide is very sinful and usually people commit suicide next life. They may not get a human body, they have to be a ghost. Because they're given the human body and if they don't if they, they end the life before they're supposed to die, they end the life. If they commit suicide, it, it's sinful. And, the pun, and so they don't get another body, they don't get a gross body in the next life. And they're just in a subtle body and they don't have a gross body. So people often do it, they think they're thinking that they will avoid the suffering by committing suicide, but they just give themselves more suffering by committing suicide. So we don't we don't advise people to commit suicide. It's not recommended at all. But we had one devotee, there was one devotee, he got cancer and he was suffering and he could not speak. He had throat cancer and he, could, he wasn't able to speak properly and it was very painful and so he fasted. He didn't eat for two weeks and then he left the body. So that's not really, com that kind of suicide, it's not really suicide, you know, because he was already sick and he, would, he couldn't do any service, couldn't preach. So he went to his spiritual master and his spiritual master gave him permission that he could do that and so he left the body. Mm -hmm. 
But he was hearing the holy name, chant, listening to the holy name, chanting right to the end. All right. Okay. So we'll, fi we'll finish here. Thank you very much, Archana. Thank you, Nimai Sachi Sutta and Sumaduri and all the devotees. Have a good night. Hare Krishna, Srila Prabhupada Ki. Yay.